Welcome to the Accidental Experts Podcast. I'm your host, Bryce Hamilton. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and a child and family therapist. I have been in practice for over 15 years, and I'm also a mom of four. So I know the challenges both professionally and personally. I'm so glad that you're here today to grow your parenting toolbox. Please come as you are and be ready to learn. My goal is to make you the accidental expert so that you can raise healthy humans. Hi guys, welcome back. I'm so excited to introduce my guest today to you guys. We're going to be talking about emotional intelligence, which is different than intellectual intelligence. And my guest today is Santa Wilburn, and she is not only a um, certified emotional intelligence coach. She is also a life coach, but then she is also the director of a local police academy and has 27 years in law enforcement. She's also a mom and a wife, and she is going to help us to understand why she has such a passion for helping people with this idea of understanding our emotional intelligence and how it impacts our world. With that, let's get to Santa. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for asking. Yes, I am so excited for you to tell us about emotional intelligence, because to be honest, before really diving into this, I I knew what emotional intelligence is, right? Like I was trained in school, but like now let's be honest, that's been a while ago. And the development around emotional intelligence has just blown up. Like it's just so big and we have so much new information. And so I'm so excited that you're going to be sharing this because I learned a lot getting ready for this episode. So with that, let's say, let's, let's talk about what is emotional intelligence? What do people need to know about that? Okay. So emotional intelligence is, um, so I, I'm certified through the EQI 2O. So I'm going to use their definition. Um, and then I want, I'll simplify it a little bit just to help it people understand. So basically they talk about emotional intelligence is a set of emotional and social skills that what? They perceive and we, that teach us how to perceive and express ourselves, uh, develop and maintain social relationships and to cope with challenges. And this is the key, in my opinion, to be able to use emotional information in a meaningful and effective way. OK, so a lot of people think I, I teach law enforcement, so I teach a bunch of cops, many guys who think they're big and tough. Oh, I don't like to talk about emotions. I don't have emotions. I don't need the touchy feely stuff. And I'm like, it's not that at all. We all have emotions. They all affect us. And it's a matter of understanding that and using that in a meaningful and effective way. So if, if I can, can I dive in just a little bit more about that? Yeah, like, absolutely. Visualize yeah. that? So for me, a good way, when you start talking about emotional intelligence and when you read books or teach it, there's, um, kind of a diagram. I'm very visual. So I, this is how I like to learn. So, one is about self, right? So one is it's your, it's about self, self-awareness for one. So it's about how you see yourself, right? How do I see myself? Am I confident? Am I not? My strengths, my weaknesses. Mm-hmm. So self-awareness. And then it's self-perception, right? It's, it's self, how other people's, um, how other people, I'm sorry, self-management. It's how we manage ourselves. It's what we do. It's our actions and it's how other people see us. So it's about self. It's how you see yourself, right? And then it's what you do, how people see you. Mm-hmm. So that's self. And then it's social. So now it's your social awareness. It's how, how do we pick up emotions of other people? It's being aware of other people feel how other people think, right? So being aware of them and then how we respond to that. That's self management or I'm sorry, social management. That's how we respond to that. So when you think of emotional intelligence, Um, it's self and social, and it's basically using the information, how we feel, how they feel and responding appropriately. And it all, like a lot of it centers around relationships. So hopefully I know that's a very long winded answer to your question, but hopefully that explains it a little bit for people to understand kind of the behaviors and what exactly emotional intelligence is. Yeah, no, I think that's really helpful. I think when I think about that, it's because the relationships are really why we're here, I think, right? Mm-hmm. Connecting with other people, like that part is so important. And our emotions, whether we want them or not, are going to show up and they impact how we respond to things. Absolutely. And if we think that other people 
perceive something a certain way, like as teenagers, especially, but I think this impacts us through our lifetime is that if somebody else, if we have the perception that somebody else views us a certain way, then we're going to respond to them a certain way. Absolutely. And so it's, I mean, we can get lots of mixed messages. Mm -hmm. And I think, especially like when I think about the teenage years and like, you're trying to figure yourself out. And then if you think that your parent thinks this, or you think that your teacher thinks this, or you think that your friend thinks this, then you're going to respond differently. You may not send the email to ask your teacher for help because you think that the teacher doesn't like you. Right. Right. And so then that inadvertently impacts you really negatively because you may need that support. But then also if you think your parent won't understand or doesn't understand then you may not ask them for help or, you know, vice versa. Like parents can also perceive their kids in certain ways and us in business and relationships. And so I think this is so important to life. It might actually be more important than our intellectual intelligence. Absolutely. I mean, studies show that your emotional intelligence is a much higher predictor of uh, success and performance and your overall well-being than IQ. Yeah. Uh, so I totally agree with that. And when you were talking about, you know, a, a, a teenager and how they feel about themselves and then, you know, or what, the, how they respond to them, but then think about the person they're responding to. Well, that person has their own set of emotional mm -hmm. intelligence, good or bad or different. So then how do they respond back? And many times in relationships, these are sometimes uh, what gets us caught up and we have our, our, our issues sometimes or our conflicts. Is because one, we have our own set of emotional intelligence and we have a uh, bias in there a little bit too. And, sure. and if you're not confident in yourself. So how you feel about yourself, um, that affects the whole conversation and the whole relationship. So well, that's absolutely. It's so important to talk about, to learn about and to grow where you need to grow. Yeah. So with that, let's talk about like, how do you identify what your strengths and or weaknesses are areas for growth? Like, how do we get this information? Um, well, uh, different assessments, in my opinion. Um, so if you go on, like I have, so through EQ, um, EQ to EQI 2.0, we have a very detailed, that is a very scientific based, one of the only scientific based assessments that I know that's out there. It's reliable. It's, va it's valid. It's tested. Um, so you could do that. Obviously that, that costs money. Um, but there's other ones like, um, just pick up this book, emotional intelligence 2.0. It's a popular mm -hmm. book, very simple read. They have their own assessment inside. So if you Google different types of assessments, um, you can do go through different assessments. I can't speak though to the accuracy of those sure. different assessments out there, right? But hopefully it'll start giving you some gauge, maybe do your own research on what you think is a good one or a valid one. Um, I say do, do some assessments, think about it, ask other people. You know, you may think you see yourself, we talk about social awareness. And if you're social awareness, if, if you're kind of low on that, you may see yourself one way and other people are like, oh no, girl, <laughs> that's not how other people see you. So you mm -hmm. have conversations with people. Um, you know, many times when I'm teaching a class or we're talking about this, I tell people as we're going through each of these different behaviors, so do a self-assessment. See, where do you think you fall? Because it's very interesting when you do actually the assessment and see where you fall and where the assessment says. Many times they're very similar, but there's sometimes they're quite different. And those are very, those are things you need to know about and to work through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it plays into how we're engaging with the world, right? And so I think, you know, our self-perception is so important, but then how other people see us is equally important because, that's going to be whether somebody's going to come up and talk to you or not, mm -hmm. or if somebody's going to feel comfortable sharing something with you or not. And if they're going to ask for your help, or if they think that you're going to respond a certain way, then they're going to make decisions based on their feeling about how they feel about you. So, I mean, it can get very convoluted, but I think it's so true of these nuances. I mean, sometimes they're really big things where it's like, I know in my life. I have a set of really good friends. It's funny because none of them are really friends outside of me. It's like, I'm the connection point, but mm -hmm. like each of them has a certain role. Like if I really want support, emotional support, there's certain people that it's like, I am not going to go because that person's going to be like, come on, pick yourself up. You got this move on. Right. And if I'm not wanting a pep talk right now, that's not the person I'm going to go to. So like, it does really impact our relationships, but it's good to have awareness of that. And sometimes we can grow, like if we're not emotionally aware, 
or we're not like letting our kids have feelings, then they're probably not going to share their feelings. And then we're going to miss out on a lot of their life because so much of what we're doing is how we feel about things. Correct. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So parenting can kind of be like running a business. I know it's not exactly that, but it's, but sometimes I think about making decisions as a parent, like this is a business decision. Like don't get emotional about this. Like I sometimes have to say that. So, you know, when we think about that idea of, of running a company or something like that is kind of like our homes, how do you think the emotional intelligence part can apply to parenting? Oh, well, I feel like it's huge. It's, it's all in parenting. It, uh, parenting's about relationships, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like one, it's about your relationship with your child and how do you have a healthy relationship with your child and try to teach them and direct them, but also love on them, right. To show the balance of both, but also we're teaching our child to have healthy relationships, right. And we want our children to be resilient. Well, resiliency is rooted in emotional intelligence behaviors. And so um, I think, I think it's huge for parenting. I wish I had this information um, and was, um, you know, had this information was able to respond and use this when I was uh, raised, I have two boys. And so when I was raising them, I, I wish I would have known some of this because I think it would have helped me understand them a little bit too. ask questions. Mm -hmm. So I think it's huge for parenting. I think it's great to understand, um, understand your child and what they're going through. So if I can expand a little bit, yeah, um, please. I don't know if you have a particular question, but so like, so like, for example, young children, like a child, I mean, you could even see this in different ages. You have a young child uh, and they, we need to teach them when they're getting upset or mad, we need to teach them, okay, what are you feeling? What's that name, that emotion. And then how mm -hmm. do you respond appropriately? Like, you know, little toddlers, they'll, you know, hit their brother, my kid, hey, hit their brother, hit their older brother or their little brother. Well, why did you hit them? Why well, was mad? So we start talking about that as resting. Okay. Well, you were mad. Okay. Well, what is a better way to handle this? Because we can't hit people. So it's, it's really important when kids start acting out or doing things, asking the why behind it. So you're, mm -hmm. you're asking, why are you feeling this way? What happened that made you feel this way? So we, mm -hmm. It's important as a parent to walk your child through that as they're growing up so then they can have these 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 emotions, understand what they're feeling and have appropriate responses to that as they get older, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, okay, let's talk teenagers. A young girl, you mentioned teenage, a girl, you know, sometimes young. Um, I had two boys, so mine were completely opposite, but two girls um, have some nieces that are a lot of emotion, right? Mm -hmm. um, something happens and, oh, it's the end of the world. And so sometimes maybe our, our, your child may be over on the high end of emotion that they feel everything. Mm -hmm. And then if you had a dad, let's say, and it could be a mom, so I'm not just picking on dads, right? But if you had a dad to say, all right, this is ridiculous, suck it up. That, that's not helping her, right? It's not helping explain why are you so uh, so upset? And then, you know, we also talk about reality testing a little bit. Okay, you think it's the end of the world, but is it really the end of the world? And really kind of just like, walking through that with them and helping them when you feel this way, okay, this is how you feel. This is why you feel it. What's some ways that you could do it? And then I would go back and say, maybe I would come in and go, hey, when I get upset or someone hurts me, I feel this way too, but this is what I do to make me feel better. So we're teaching our children that when you have these emotions, how do you cope with these strategies, mm -hmm. how to cope with them, how to respond? Because, uh, you know, if you had a father or a mother, you had a parent who was very like, suck it up, buttercup, get over it. It's ridiculous. You're not, you're not fostering that relationship with your child. Mm -hmm. So, so you're not only helping that child in future relationships with other people, but what about your relationship? You want your child when they're really upset about something to be able to come to you. Right. But mm -hmm. if you're like, this is ridiculous, it's not that big of a deal and not understanding and helping them through that, they're not going to come to you. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to maybe have a strained relationship, you know, and then that parent though, also maybe they're very low in emotional intelligence on the emotional side. Right. So they need to, they could also work on that too, to help that balance so they can have a good relationship with each other. Yeah. I, I just, love this. Yeah. I was going to say, I just think it's so embedded in parenting 
Um, mm-hmm. because it's all about relationships and then, and teaching our children how to respond appropriately. So they're successful yeah. and happy. Yes, yes, yes. Well, and, and I think, you know, if we don't process the emotions, we don't identify what they are, they're going to stay in our body. Yes. And, and then that causes problems. So, you know, if we have a lot of anxiety and we're just pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down, that is going to manifest itself in physical ailments. Like you are going to make yourself sick. If you have a lot of anger and you push it down, you're going to do the same thing. I mean, any emotion that gets pushed down and not identified and processed is going to cause a problem. And in my practice, I often talk to parents about like, you know, I think sometimes parents are like, well, I don't want my kid to be like too focused in the emotion, right? Like that's a problem because it's too, too much. Then they're just going to be like, that's an excuse. And I'm like, no, hold on. We have to say what it is first, right? So we can say, I'm mad. It's okay to be mad. It is like all feelings are good. It's just what we do with them. So, so we identify it. Then we have to metabolize it, right? We have to break it down so that our body can let it go because holding on to feelings is not valuable. They're only really valuable in the moment that they're actually happening, right? They're occurring there. It's our body's way of telling us something about what's happening, And then that's it, right? So, so if we metabolize it, that means we are breaking it down. We're asking the whys. We're getting curious about what our kids are experiencing or our colleagues or our partner or anybody that we're navigating through a situation with. We're getting curious about what is causing that. Then we're helping them problem solve through it. Then, then we get to let it go. Yeah. Because I, I know that it's, I'm, I'm a radical acceptor. (laughs) So meaning when things happen, I generally am like, okay, that's how it is. And that's sometimes helpful, right? But sometimes it's like, hey, okay, actually slow down, name the feeling, say what it is, talk about why that is, then you can accept it. But like, let's metabolize that feeling so it doesn't get trapped someplace. But then other people may talk incessantly about their feelings and never move past that to like do something about it. And I think this part of understanding that like, we're going to identify it, then we're going to figure out ways to solve it then we don't really need to talk about it anymore, right? Like it's not something that's still adding value. It's actually taking away. But I think, you know, sometimes we get stuck in that because at least with teenagers and and maybe kids too, and I'm sure this happens with adults is they'll say the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, like talking about a situation that happened. And I think it's because they don't feel heard. They don't feel like you get what they're saying. Like no one's understanding that. So if we take the time to like slow down, Mm-hmm. and hear the feelings, understand why they feel that way, help them solve the problem, then chances are we're not going to keep needing to return to that event. Do you agree? Absolutely. And I, I and you touched on something that I think is very important about emotional intelligence is, you know, um, it's behaviors that can be changed, right? So when you t- take these assessments on whether you're high or low, a lot of it's about it's behaviors that you do that you practice. So in, in the situation you were just talking about that having the emotion, being able to process it, work through it and respond appropriately, what are we doing? We're building habits, right? So mm-hmm. the next time that this person is stressed about something or feeling this way, oh, I've done this before. This is what works. Now this is what I do. Uh, if us as parents don't help teach our kids that, then how are they going to start practicing those good habits? to be healthy in this way emotionally. So Mm -hmm. when we talk about emotional intelligence, if you're low on something, that means you just don't, not necessarily that you can't, it's just either one, you haven't been exposed to it. So if you have parents who are very unemotional, right? This child that's experiencing this is really struggling because I don't know what to do because I haven't seen it. I've not practiced that habit because my parents don't do it. And so that's Mm -hmm. how, just to your point, that's how you get better. You go through that process. So then when it happens again, you know how to handle it, you know what to do. And the more it happens, the better you get at it. And that is, I think, as parents, we're trying to instill in our kids is these good habits and practices to do so they can be healthy in all areas of their life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, that makes me think about in my practice, I'm often like one of the foundational pieces that I do with most families, because most of the families that come in do need the support, but is to teach kids how to talk about their feelings. And I'll talk to parents and I'll be like, how do you guys do? Or they'll be like, our kid doesn't talk about their feelings or they're not very good at identifying them. And I'll be like, how do you guys do? Like as adults, like, how is that? Well, we don't really talk about our feelings. And I'm like, 
tell me about that. Like, I'm curious why, you know? And then they're like, oh, okay. And then when I'm like, okay, so the homework is like everybody mm -hmm. in the house is going to have to start talking about their feelings. They're kind of like, oh, but then they see the value in it. Like it actually starts resolving problems to identify how we're feeling. And I love the idea of making things like this a habit because it's a good foundation to be able to talk about our feelings. And then we can grow from that. But we first have to be able to say what we're feeling. We have to know what that feels like. And sometimes I'll have kids that are, they don't really know. Like they have like three things that make them worried. They're like storms, you know, my parents going out of town and a test or something. And I'm like, okay, and then what, what else? Right? Like there's thousands of things that make us scared all day. Like that happened. Now that doesn't mean we don't push through them, but there's tons of things that come up. And then once they realize that, then they can name it. Mm -hmm. And then it doesn't have power over them anymore. So I think this emotional intelligence part and in practicing is also so important. And then I love the part that you're saying about that we can grow to build new habits so I think the information that you can gain will say like, here's where you're, you're strong and here's, you know, where you could grow, but it's not like a set thing. Whereas like in right. our intellectual intelligence is like more of something. It's like, you might be able to practice, but like, it's not really going to do much of anything, but this is something where we can totally transform our lives in terms of like becoming stronger in certain areas. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that, and that, that is so important because if you stop doing it, then you're going to just even though you know how to, if you don't continue that habit, then you stop doing it. And then before you know it, you realize you're like, wow, why am I feeling this way? Why do I not have those strong relationships I used to? Well, because I'm not doing X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. um, so it, that's important. And one thing when you were talking, it made me think, um, you know, as parents, you know, we talk about, we were talking about, well, do you talk about emotions as a parent? And we're like, no. And I, one thing that really opened my eyes, and I'm sure many people have experienced this, when I was uh, a brand new parent, uh, my child was probably maybe toddler and we had a dog and, you know, I get on my dog, like stop it or get out of here or whatever. And one day my dog, my son was like, you know, Ralph, you need to get out of here. Are you? And he totally was mimicking what I do. And I was like, so talking about self-awareness, right? You, I just saw myself and I was like, wow, that is what I sound like. And so it was a huge eye opener to me that we are constantly modeling behaviors for our kids and they are constantly looking at us to do, well, if mom and dad do it, then that's probably, that's what I should do. Right. So we really, as parents need to be really, I think, conscientious of that. And, and, you know, none of us are perfect, right? We all need grace as parents, but just remember that, that they're watching you. And if, and if we tell our kids, you know, you need to start doing these habits, processing these, and these are ways to do it. Then we also need to do that as well, too, because mm -hmm. then we're giving mixed messages. Well, you don't do that. So, mm -hmm. so I just want to put that too sense in because whether we realize it or not at a very young age, they are paying attention to what we are doing mm -hmm. and we're starting to form their little, their personalities. So, yes, yes. So true. I mean, I think this is absolutely a fact is that our kids are watching us and it is probably the hardest part of parenting is that we not only have to teach the things, but we also need to be doing them. Yeah. Um, it's, it's way easier to say whatever it is, like do it like this, right? Cause we know what maybe the, the best way is, or what we think is the best way, but then sometimes it's hard for us to even model it. But I think those are opportunities to be like, I, I know that like, as a family, we're working on talking about our feelings. I'm still struggling with that. Right. To like say to your kids, this is hard for me because it's going to be hard for them sometimes too. We can still be human. There is no perfect parent. I, the other day I had a, a parent text me and, and they were saying, they're like, I'm not going to win any awards this year as you know, being parent of the year. And I was like, look, None of us are winning any parent of the year awards. Like we're just all doing the best we can. And I think the more information we have, the more that we are going to feel in line with what we want to be. And I think being aware of our emotions and our kids' emotions and where they're strong and where they can grow is important. So with that, let's talk about like, if our kid has areas that, you know, their strengths and areas for growth are different than us. And I think often that happens, but you tell me like your experience with, with people of, um, even in the same family, having different, um, strengths and weaknesses. What, what if, 
how do we handle this as, as a parent with this variance of like, we're maybe really good at expressing our emotions, but our kid isn't as good at that, or maybe it's vice versa, or maybe it's about resilience or there's so many different areas. Like how do we navigate those differences? You know, that's a good question. Cause it's, it's all depends on the differences and what those differences mm-hmm. are. Right. Um, and kind of to the, to the, Example I gave earlier where you have, a, let's say, a teenage daughter who's just full of emotions, but you have a parent who, um, for whatever reason, is very um, quiet, doesn't express their emotions. You know, the, they have a strength and then they have a weakness. And what does that look like? And what we always try to do and look to is balance, right? Mm-hmm. We need some sort of balance. So I encourage people to, if you, you know... It, that you have to try to work on, okay, recognizing that I see that maybe this is what I can do. So hopefully one person in that relationship or that situation sees that. And a lot of it goes to empathy, right? It goes to like, as a parent, let's try to have some empathy for our child or, or as, as parents in a relationship with our spouses, have empathy for one another and try to learn and understand where they're coming from. Because they're all going to be different. Some can be good. Some can be bad because let's say you have, you're in a relationship and the way the the assessment I do is very detailed out. And one of them is flexibility and impulse control, right? So if you have somebody who is very flexible, way high flexible and someone who, um, you know, is very high controlling a little bit, well, there are differences, but they work well together and then they can help balance each other out. So sometimes mm-hmm. when there's variance and differences, it can be good. Um, you just have to recognize it and talk about it. That's why I think it's so important to learn about it, to learn about the, these behaviors and to look at that relationship and go, okay, why do we not communicate very well? What, what is the issue here? Why am I feeling, um, why don't like, why do I not have good relationships with my friends? Why do I not have a lot of trust? Why do I not trust people? So there's so, so many different questions you can ask for that. So I hope that kind of answer your question, but it's really kind of a, a loaded questions with a lot of depends on it. Like sure, depends sure. on this, depends on that. So um it could be good and it could be bad. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, what, what I have learned in this process of learning more about emotional intelligence is that like something I really love about this process is we may be really high in a particular area. And when we were talking about it before this interview, it wasn't about like be less of that because uh, like one thing that I am really good at is empathy. And it would be really hard for me to imagine that I would not be empathetic, like just to turn that off. Like, I'm going to be like, yeah, that's not going to work. Cause like, that's part of who I see myself to be and something that I like about myself. So I'm not going to want to go away from that, but there are ways to balance that out so that I'm also being assertive, right? Like, and that I am also, you know, maybe with empathy, I'm having more impulse control issues. And so then it's about being more balanced and, you know, like, and so I think being more assertive, like I, I like this idea of that. It's not get rid of that part, just bring up this part, which I think is so important because oftentimes as parents will be like, I, I can see this applying to like so many things of like, we have a kid who's scared and it's like, well, I want my kid to be less scared. And it's like, well, I understand that. Like, yeah, of course. But like, how do we do that? Like just being like, don't be scared doesn't work or else. I mean, I wouldn't have a job, which would be totally fine if that was, if that's how it worked, but it doesn't, right? Like we're so much more complex than that. So it's, it's about, you know, resilience and being more assertive and these other qualities that we can build that actually help to balance out that awareness. Cause like having awareness of potential problems is actually a great skill. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that if it is so high, it may be limiting our ability to do other things. Mm -hmm. So I like your idea of it's about gathering the information, right? And I don't know that there's, I haven't seen a kid assessment, but maybe there is a kid assessment out there. But I think, you know, as a parent, if you can educate yourself on what these areas are, and then you can kind of put your kid in a space to understand like, okay, we're really strong in this. How do we balance that part out to grow that skill? And I think that is so helpful. Yes. I'm glad you mentioned that um, because you're exactly right that many times on these behaviors, we call them, um, you know, you're high, but maybe you're a little too high. And then exactly what you said, we don't want, we're not talking about getting rid of it or lowering it, but finding that counterbalance. 
and being more balanced and improving some of those other strengths. So you, I'm glad you brought that up um, because that is exactly what you need to do, especially when someone is way too high. We don't, we don't want you to be less of anything, but there mm-hmm. is a, there is a, you know, people are always great. Hey, high is great. Well, so you can be too high if you're not careful if, if we don't balance it. So, yeah. And I think, yeah, we can, things in moderation, we can learn how to be less, you know, aware of social or like situations where we're caught, a fear is being caused. But I think it's also about just, you know, being more resilient or being more assertive and growing those skills that that ends up kind of bringing down that other part, probably inadvertently is by being more assertive, we're going to be maybe less, resistant or timid about something. Um, Okay. So how do we change our parenting perspective maybe based on this? So we talked about like how things can be different with uh, parents within their system, whether it's both of the parents or the like can have different strengths and weaknesses and then, or areas for growth. And then our kids can be different. So it can be like a whole pot of things. So like, what do you think we can do with this information? I I think I think as a parent, I think one thing we start with is just becoming informed, right? You know, we're starting by this, this podcast, learning about what emotional intelligence is. And then now let's start reflecting on you. Where are you at? What do you need to work on? Maybe go take one of the self-assessments, talk to a good friend, a spouse, you know, how are your relationships? Um, you know, even just start doing, um, you know, one thing that I always taught people, if you want to just start journaling a little bit, like, okay, let, let's let talk about, let's, I'm trying to figure out this whole emotion thing. Where am I at with emotions? Well, start journaling. Well, what did I feel today? Why did I feel it? What were my triggers? And just start kind of working through that process. So I think from our perspective, what we need to change, I think as parents, it should start with us, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> we're the adult, whether even we're, even if we have adult children, I think it should start with us as parents. And then we can start helping our child and teaching our child and what we learn, then we can pass on to them. And maybe eventually, um, I'm not sure if there's an assessment for a child or there, there probably is. I'm sure um, as I've been reading different articles, I know they are starting to pick up a lot um, on um, education and what this is with education and maybe those children who are very gifted, what does emotional intelligence look like for them? So I know there's a lot of research going on, um, a lot out there. So if there's not, I would likely to believe there would be one in the near future. So as a, as a parent, start looking at yourself, you know, that's, you know, so many times we can only control ourselves initially. So let's start with ourselves, what we can do to make ourselves better and then help educate our children. And then also, then then they're going to, again, we start that you're a reflection, right? They're going to look at you. What are you doing differently? My mom usually gets really mad at everything. Now she's not so mad at stuff. What's changed? They will notice those behaviors. So many times as a parent, I think the best thing we can do is start with ourselves. Yeah, that's great advice. Okay, so you haven't known about emotional intelligence your whole life. And so this has been something that you've added, you know, years into your parenting journey. So like, how has emotional intelligence changed you and your perspective? Um, Actually, to me, it's been... I. Uh, I don't want to be dramatic, but I feel like life changing in a sense. So, um, I, uh, law enforcement background and in, and trainer in law enforcement. And so I kept hearing this term of emotional intelligence and what it was. And I'm like, I really, and the more I heard about it, I really liked it. I'm like, wow, this is, and I was in leadership roles and I was like, this is something I really need to know about. Um, it'll affect us as leaders and as law enforcement officers. So then I um, went and got certified in it and did the assessments. And the more I learned about it, and then I did my assessment, I was like, whoa, it smacked me in the face. Like, okay, I thought I was feeling this away, but when you see it in writing, like right in front of your face, you're like, okay, well now some time to make some changes. And, And, you know, for me, a little personally, um, some of the areas that I saw that I wasn't doing very well in was, um, emotional awareness. It was, um, relationships and, um, trust. And so a couple of things like that. So again, 27 years in law enforcement and law enforcement, we tend to, to be able to survive in that field. We tend to, uh, push our emotions down. Uh, you just become numb to it. Uh, many times we don't want to pull those feelings out and feel them because that brings up the trauma or whatever. And for us to be able to function and do day-to-day life and be healthy, 
we kind of pushed that down. So it it was um, kind of very eye opening to realize I knew I probably did it, but I didn't realize how much I did it. Mm-hmm. And then it, how that and the other thing, you know, we kind of talked about before this is how all of those different behaviors re- impact one another. Right. So me being um, less emotional aware and I don't ex- didn't, then I didn't express if I wasn't aware I wasn't expressing. What is that doing? That's damaging my relationships, right? Because how can you have a relationship with somebody that's not built on trust? And if it's not b- being vulnerable with the, the, uh, each other and having that person you can go to, but so it was one-sided. And so I wondered like, wow, I can see how it's affecting my relationships. So I started putting some of these strategies in place, like, okay, well, I'm going to start drilling. I'm going to start paying attention. I'm going to start bringing those feelings back out. And I'm going to find that person to start being vulnerable to expressing my relationships. I had let so many of my old friends, you know, I haven't talked to them. I started bringing back people into my life that I'm like, oh my God, started having fun again. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I just felt like I was just in this, the circle, this rut that I didn't even realize I was in. And so when it really slapped me in my face, I was like, wow. And to me, it was life-changing because I'm so much more when you, with particular assessment that I have, when you start doing that, it even shows you like um, resiliency and your overall score is your overall happiness and well being in life. And you know, as parents, we want to raise our children to be happy and to have an overall good well being as we do too. And so it really changed me. I'm just, um, I'm more fulfilled, I guess, more happier because I've established those relationships and figure out where I was worked on some of those shortcomings. And so, um, and then also in, in my work, I've realized in the leadership roles to be more empathetic, to talk about feelings more, to understand where people are coming from. Um, the other thing we talk about in emotional intelligence is reality testing, you know, our biases, everybody comes into relationships with different experiences. They see things through different lenses, kind of understanding that a little bit. Once you get to know them a little bit, you get to understand why they do what they do. It's very interesting. And, and I do coaching as well. And in some of my coaching sessions, I can look at someone's report. But the first thing I do is I'm like, hey, tell me about yourself. How did you get here? Where do you want to go? And when we just start having those conversations, I can look at their sus and I'm like, okay, this makes complete sense why you're low here, why you're high here. So what we do in our lives and our experiences kind of build us up to where we are, right? And how we respond to things. And so we need to start, it's a good way to look back at that and go, okay, well, I need to start changing that. And once I started doing that, I've had people go, gosh, the old Santa's is back. And so um, it it was just really, it, it was really changed me the way, changed the, the way that I look at things. And so um, I appreciate it. And I just love to learn more about it and to help others. Yeah, I love this. Okay. So finally, let's conclude with like, what do you want parents to take away from this conversation? We've kind of downloaded a lot of different things. So what do you really want them to leave this conversation with? Just take a look at yourself, you know, and, and where are you at emotionally? How do you process the emotions? But then also give your kids grace, Mm -hmm. right? Because if they're having a bad day or they're processing emotion and it's just foreign to you, well, let's talk about that. Help them work through that. Um, you know, sometimes we just get so busy in our lives. It's just easier to say, suck it up. I don't got time for this. And But let's stop. Let's take the time for this. Because if we address it now, then that will give them good habits to go in in the future so they can be healthier and learn to process their, this, process it on their own in the future. And so um, I just, would, you know, parents just take time to learn about it. Take time to learn about yourself. And then also your child. I mean, if it's young enough that you're like, you can't do an assessment, when you start learning about it, understanding it, you're going to tell right away where your kid is high and where your kid is low. And then it's our job to help them process through that. Mm -hmm. I love this. Thank you so much for your time today. This has been such a fun conversation. Well, you're welcome. And thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I, I love talking about it. I could talk about it all day. Thanks again, Santa. That was such great information. I don't know about you, but so much of what she said really resonated with me and about my parenting journey. And I hope it resonates with you about your parenting journey and how we can grow. With that, I will say thank you so much for your time today. Please like and subscribe to our show. Give us a rating. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. And also keep the emails coming with requests for topics. We are loving it. Have a fantastic day.
some words from our legal team. The information presented in this podcast is not intended or implied to be a substitute for appropriate professional advice, diagnosis, or treatment. All content, including text, graphics, images, and information contained on or available through this podcast is for general information purposes only. This podcast makes no representations and assumes no responsibility for the accuracy or information on or available through this podcast. And such information is subject to change without notice. You are encouraged to confirm any information obtained through this program with other sources and review all information regarding any condition or treatment with the appropriate professionals. What we're saying is, yes, I am a real therapist, but I'm not your therapist.